During the sheeting process, it's a good idea to support the girths at the midpoint of the girth span. This will take any sag out of the girths, which will ensure your screw lines are even along the flange of the girths. To prepare for sheeting, chalk a line about an inch and three quarters below the top of the concrete around the perimeter of the building. This chalk line will serve as the bottom edge of your sheeting and will aid in making sure that your sheeting is even. Then taking a long board, mark the center of each girt flange in relation to the chalk line to establish where the screws holes will be in your sheeting. Once exact vertical location of the screws has been determined, mark all screw locations on the sheeting. To determine the horizontal location of the screws on each sheet, please refer to your engineering plans. Note that when making these marks, you can stack multiple sheets and then pre-drill a few sheets at the same time. Note that this process will make installing the sheets much easier and ensure that you have nice even screw lines around your building. However, you must take extreme care before drilling the sheets. Sheeting is one of the most expensive building components and if sheeting is drilled in the wrong location, sheeting will need to be reordered at further additional cost. To further prepare sheets, you can install foam sealing strips at the bottom of the sheet using double-sided tape to ensure the sealing strips stay in place until installation. Once wall sheets are fully prepared, you may need to install insulation. If so, this will need to be installed before the sheeting, as the sheeting will lie on top of the insulation. First, cut the insulation to the proper length which you will need to measure beforehand and then after pulling the insulation tight, secure the insulation to the frame using double-sided tape and make sure to cut off any excess. In this building, we are using foam foil insulation, which requires overlapping the individual sheets by approximately one to two inches. Then the flanges are folded back in the self-adhesives, bringing the two edges together, and then a staple is placed approximately every 12 inches along the length of the insulation. Once insulation is installed, you can install the sheeting over it. As the sheets are lifted, someone needs to make sure the bottom of the sheet stays even with the chalk line snapped earlier. Once the sheet is properly aligned and the sheeting ribs are plumbed with a level, Screws can be installed for the pre-drilled holes into the base angle, girts, and e-purlin. When installing sheeting on all walls, start at the back side of the building working towards the front, so that when the building is viewed from normal line of sight, you will not see the overlapping sheeting. Once the side walls are installed, end wall sheets can be installed, using the same techniques as used on the side wall. Start by installing any insulation. Then install the sheeting, making sure to use the bottom chalk line as well as the level to make sure all sheeting remains plumb. Keep in mind that the sheeting on the end walls needs to be well thought out. As each sheet has a different height and has a specific location in which it will be placed, care should be taken so that there is as little sheeting wastage as possible. Note that when installing sheeting on an end wall, a portion of the sheeting will extend above the rake angle. Once all sheeting is installed, the extended section can be trimmed off, which can be done with a Sawzall. If you are installing sheeting and insulation around a window, you will need to cut any insulation out of the opening, taking care to waste as little material as possible. Make sure to seal the insulation around the opening with double-sided tape. If installing a window, you will then need to install the window at this time.
Once it is level, you can install self-drilling flathead screws around the perimeter of the window, securing it to the jams, header, and sill. After window is secured with the flathead screws, caulking can be installed to seal the space between the window and the insulation. Once the window is sealed, jam trim can be installed on all four sides of the window to prepare it for sheeting. The top horizontal piece should be approximately two inches longer than the width of the window. Then one inch lips can be cut on each side so that the top piece of trim will fit over the top of the vertical pieces. This is done so the flow of water will not be directed into the building spaces. The jam trim can be secured to the jams, header, and sill using flathead screws. Once it is secured, siding will need to be measured to cut so that it will fit around the window. Be aware that any sparks during cutting could permanently stain steel products. Take care when cutting materials, especially when cutting sheeting, trim, or any other painted material. Also ensure that care is taken when handling cut sheets. Once the sheet is cut, fit it around the window. Ensure that it is plumb and secure it as was done with the other sheeting. If you are installing sheeting and trim around a door, follow a similar procedure. However, you will first install the door jam and header cover if applicable. Then install the jam trim followed by the insulation and finally the sheeting. The door itself does not need to be installed until later.